What happened in Rochester, New York, the suffocation death of Daniel Prude. This is a more complicated case, Dr. Ron, and I'm interested to hear your forensic analysis on this. I want to remind our viewers of some of the facts of this case. This man, Daniel Prude, was high on PCP. You could see he was naked. One, it was snowing in the middle of the streets. He, you could verbally hear him say that he wants the cops' guns. He expressed that he wanted to take the guns away. He had a spit bag on his head. It's my understanding that spit bags are completely breathable. However, there also was pressure that was put on his neck. It appeared by the officer's knee. Dr. Ron, what do you make of it? Well, this is right up my alley. This is what we refer to as a psychomedical emergency. We have a person under the influence of fencyclidine, uh, perhaps close to a toxic level. I haven't seen the nanograms per milliliter reading, but a toxicologist could tell us that. Uh, the police are called out because he's agitated, he's chaotic, he's naked, which means he's hyperthermic or overheated. We have running, spitting, and biting behavior. These are all classic symptoms and cues of an agitated, chaotic event. The officers are trying to contain him. They're trying to restrain him. Uh, he yells out that he has COVID. So of course they're gonna protect themselves and they put a spit mask over this individual and then pressure is applied. But pressure is applied for only two minutes. Uh, there is uh, some part of the fact pattern. I haven't been able to resolve it yet as to whether an officer slammed his head into the ground. I don't, I'm not sure the video shows that entire encounter. But then again, we take a look at the autopsy report, which does show the toxicology, as you indicated, uh, but also says that he asphyxiated in concert or during the course of police restraint. Now, it also says that he has excited delirium. So don't forget, excited delirium is a forensic medical diagnosis, and it has to be based on objective facts. Usually, we would take the brain and harvest it uh, within 24 hours, and we would send it to the University of Miami Medical Center and do a brain biopsy uh, for excited delirium. We would actually find evidence of, of excited delirium, but certainly he's agitated and chaotic. Now, I wanna talk about something very quickly. I see in the media that they say that excited delirium is a controversial diagnosis, not whatsoever. That's just more media you know, smoke and mirrors. And they say, well, it's it's not uh, it's not a diagnosis because it's not fine in the diagnostic manual, the DSM-5. Let me tell you something, let's just keep this simple. A gunshot wound, a knife to the heart is not found in the diagnostic manual. And every single component of excited delirium, if you look them up individually, and the DSM-5 is basically used for medical billing, uh, every single one of those things is in the diagnostic manual and fully explained. So let's just knock that off uh, right away. I don't want to hear again that excited delirium is some sort of controversial uh, medical diagnosis. He's agitated, he's chaotic, and there is plenty of objective evidence to that. Now, as to whether he actually asphyxiated with the mask or by something the officer's done, that takes a lot more study. I would want to look at the mask. I would want to see if there was evidence of blood, of sputum, of vomit on the mask. Uh, I would want to know the temporal relationship of the mask, how long the mask was on him. I would like to know whether there was any, as we've talked about this before, uh, any trauma to the breathing apparatus, to the neck straps, where when we open him up and flay open the neck. I hate to get graphic, but this is an autopsy. Right. Let's take a look and see if there is any evidence of trauma. Let's see if there's any evidence of hemorrhaging. And let's find out exactly the nature of the pressure right. placed against this person. And, you know, sometimes I have to deal with coroners and medical examiners that this is really not their wheelhouse. Yeah. And they, they put this stuff out here. And when we take a look at it as competent medical professionals and as, you know, use of force analysts and criminologists, we find something completely 